Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of the Intellectual Saviors of Wrestling with your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage, Martin, and the one and only Sam H. And this is Smackdown Live Review from 25th of October. Yeah. And it is live. And we opened up the show with Bray Wyatt. Yeah. <laughs> and he would be facing off in a very quickly announced no disqualification match. Yeah, a rematch from Backlash. Lash of the back. <laughs> match no one wanted to see. No. Because Kane is as stale as weak old bread. <laughs> yeah, uh, the match was okay. Obviously, inevitably, Luke Harper got involved. And then Randy Orton's music hit, and we thought, wow, well, you know, he's here to even out the odds. Yeah. He got in the ring, and he RKO'd Kane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, much to Bray's surprise, and Luke Harper's surprise, and everybody else's surprise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bray was really surprised, and then he, he just grabbed Kane and pinned him. <laughs> yeah. Un deux trois. As in. in. I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense because, like I say, Kane did kidnap Bob Orton once. <laughs> and beat him up. Yeah, and then they done this whole little mini interview back uh, backstage and that, and sort of Randy got asked about his thoughts and why he RKO'd Kane, and he just simply answered, if you can't beat him, join him. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> So is the Wyatt family going back up to four members? Possibly. Who knows? Find out. Same channel, same <laughs> station. Next week. <laughs> well, it'll only be three at the moment because Rowan's injured again. Yeah. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's an interesting development. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm curious just to see what happens next. Yeah. After we come back from this commercial break. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and then after that commercial break, oh. <laughs> we had <laughs> Return of Becky Lynch. Yes. She was uh, being interviewed by Renee Young. And then Alexa Bliss come out for no reason whatsoever. Started gobbing off to Becky and she was, well, quite politely talking a load of crap and she was saying a load of irrelevant rubbish. <laughs> yeah, you know, the usual, uh, the, that belt should be mine, you didn't deserve it. I don't know exactly what Alexa Bliss has done in her whole career to... Uh, Worthy of fighting for the title, but I suppose it, it beats, beats Nikki Bella versus Becky Lynch. Oh, I've seen that match before, it's not good watching. <laughs> yeah, and then oh, I think she cheap shotted her. Yeah, she beat up on her a little bit, and yeah, and a whole throwback to the old NWO classic. She spray painted a yellow streak on her back. Yeah. Similar to what Hogan did to Macho Man back in the late 90s. Yeah. I mean, you haven't seen that one in a while. Of course, you know the yellow streak <coughs> tends to mean coward. Yeah. So it's different, I guess. Mm, yeah, I suppose so. It's all leading up to that SmackDown Live in Glasgow. Where we will have the women's title. Uh, and then it is where things start to go downhill. We had the first qualifying match oh dear. for the apparently traditional Survivor Series tag team match. <laughs> ten on ten, apparently, is the traditional Survivor Series match. It's been done once before. <laughs> Unfortunately for us, we had the Hype Bros versus oh the Ascension. 
You know, don't worry, Sam. Your favourite was there. Mojo Rowley was there. Fuck. Staying hyped. <laughs> oh, God. I, I hate this Goomba. It's like, if anything qualifies you to be wrestling, you're a former football player. Great. It's, yeah. Uh, you got a few successful ones back in the day. Rock. Farouk. JBL. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, the Hype Bros won. <laughs> so they're on Team Smackdown. Which pretty much means Team Smackdown's fucked. His words, not mine. <laughs> Christ, I need to see who's on Team Raw, but if they're starting off with the hype bros, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, hype bros on Team SmackDown. Oh, goons. <laughs> and then, after that, we retreat to another random, pointless backstage segment with Natalia. Oh, dear. And she was staking her claims and basically saying, look, just, just name me. Captain of Team SmackDown for the Divas, was it so? the women's, yeah. the women's. We're not allowed to use the term Divas anymore, it's blacklisted. <laughs> the, the women's Survivor Series match, I don't know exactly what she's done to stake her claim for it, but then go and buy the SmackDown women's division, they've not exactly got a great shot. No. <laughs> I think they've only got like seven women on the rock. But I'm calling a conspiracy right here. Uh oh. Daniel Bryan in very, very controversial circumstances said, Oh well I've already conveniently spoken to my sister in law, <laughs> Nikki Bella. Uh oh. And she wants to be Team SmackDown captain as well. So uh you two will be having a match next to decide who will lead Team SmackDown, but whoever loses won't be on the team. Oh dear. <laughs> High stakes. I mean, can SmackDown really do with discounting any of their women? Yeah, wow. Well, Considering how little they have. <sighs> yeah, although... It does make me laugh a bit, though. They're there, they're there saying, "Oh, well, you know, we, 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 we've only got six divas on the. Uh, we've only got six women on SmackDown, and uh, there's, there's only five places." Let's just think off the top of our heads, right? You got yeah. Natalia, yeah, Nikki Bella, yeah, Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Carmella, Carmella. And oh look, Daniel Bryan's neglected to forget there's actually a seventh person. Oh no! Oh no! No, no, no! They wouldn't do that. No, it's alright. She, she's fit. She's too busy filming with your favourite actor, Nicolas Cage. Oh no! <laughs> no, actually, that and, might be a good and, thing. And his toupee. <laughs> Poor Nick. <laughs> His hair's gone to the career graveyard. <laughs> yes. How about Nikki Bella versus Natalia? Uh, yeah, the match was all right. Uh, I think the crowd was a bit lackluster. They were just a bit like, I'm not bothered who wins. No. <laughs> and controversial circumstances. Nikki Bella picked up the victory with. Her boyfriend's move, Ooh. which is the STFU. Oh no, <laughs> that that's a blacklisted term, man. We're gonna be in trouble. I don't care. It was the FU before it was the AA. <laughs> yeah, and he said it. <laughs> he invented it, despite yeah. what he might have you believe. Yeah. So there you go. Natalie is not gonna be on Team Smack now. But it wouldn't be a Nikki Bella win without an attack from behind. Yes, from Carmella. So, good luck trying to pull off Carmella and Nikki 
existing on the same team. <laughs> Great. So SmackDown's tag Survivor Series team is looking bad, and the women's team is looking worse. Yeah. Oh, we're talking of worse. It, SmackDown gets even better now. You've got the tag team champions, Yui and the Man Beast. Facing off against the Spirit Squad. Why are these guys still around? Ugh. I thought they were just going to be like a one night gimmick or whatever. They, they should have been. Yeah, this started off as some in ring segment with the Miz, you know, bragging, saying about how Dolph's Intercontinental title reign isn't going to mean anything. Like yours meant much more. <laughs> like any of your title reigns have meant anything. <coughs> Oh, yeah, they were interrupted by Dolph. He got in his cheap yeah. shots. And then that brought out the tag champions. Yeah. He said, hey, this is what it means to be a champion. We've got the belts. And it was decided right then and then if... Well, apparently, you don't need the GM's commission, permission to make a match because they just made it themselves. Yeah. This isn't Raw where they need the, the GM's permission. No. Yeah. They, they they just make it up on the spot there and then. Miz was like, "Get a ref out here! This tag title match is happening." <laughs> and it and it was. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't want to go too much on this because the match wasn't great. <laughs> no. But Beauty and the Man Beast won. Well, I, I must point out that the commentary with Miz and Dolph was pretty hilarious. Because mm. again, Dolph said. If you don't shut up, I'm going to super kick you in the face. <laughs> and he shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think that says about it all when the commentary is more entertaining than the match. <laughs> well, to be honest, the Spirit Squad weren't a good tag team back in 2006 when they did first no. start. No. So why do they feel the need to bring them back now? Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Ugh. But it's all good now. It's this main event time. Is it? Already? It is. Right. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and just to backtrack it a little bit, we started off the show with a segment with James Ellsworth saying how thankful he is for Dean for helping him out. Could he be in his corner tonight? Dean was reluctant. He was like, no, nah, you really shouldn't. You should stay back here. Yeah. We'll maybe go out afterwards. Then later in the night, he tried again. And Dean finally, probably out of pity, was like, okay, yeah, you can be in my corner. Yeah. So, when the stipulation was, Dean won the odd title match. Uh, Survivor Series? I'm guessing it would have been Survivor Series. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, our main event was the face that runs the place, the champ that runs the camp, AJ Styles. They don't want none. Against Dean Ambrose, with yeah. James Ellsworth in his corner. Yes, and as JBL put it, the man who looks like a turtle without his shell. <laughs> <laughs> Which had me in just fits of laughter. <laughs> It is. <laughs> it's rather harshly how true that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this match. Good. Yeah, I mean, I, I was really getting into it. <laughs> Slightly controversial ending, though. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, with James Ellsworth out there, AJ was taking shots at him all night. Yeah. Randley went outside, hit him in the face once. Yeah. Hit him with a drop kick through the through the turnbuckle. Yeah. And of course, in the end, James snapped. <laughs> Not his chin. No. <laughs> watch, watch it. <laughs> no, he got all hyped up. He was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it. And he super kicked AJ Styles. He gave him the no chin music. Right in front of the referee. Disqualifying Dean Ambrose. The referee was looking at him. Dean Ambrose was looking at him. 
And you were just like, you idiot. <laughs> so, AJ Styles won via disqualification, which means no title shot for Dean. Not at the moment. I imagine yeah. he'll, they'll probably do another one. More than likely. These screwy finishes tend to normally result in some sort of rematch. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. I was shouting at my TV, going, You idiot! What have you done? <laughs> Stupid idiot! It's not an ODQ match. Why would you super kick him right in front of the ref? <laughs> oh, dear. But if you're watching Talking Smack afterwards, which I highly recommend, it's only 20 minutes. Yeah. Adds to the program. James Ellsworth was on there. And Daniel Bryan said to him, are you worried about Dean Ambrose retaliating? Uh oh. And he was worried. And he should be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this was a decent episode of Smackdown, I thought. Yeah. There was some good stuff on here. Work to be done with the tag, with the Survivor Series teams. Oh, just a tad. And we're all really looking forward to the women's Survivor Series match. Well, with this whole women's revolution, it should be a bit better than the previous year's women's matches. Yeah. Which have tended to have just been a non-stop parade of finishing moves and eliminations. So, I think that about does it. Are we done? Yeah, no, sorry, I'm just uh, prepping for our uh, Hell in a Cell preview that should be coming out shortly. It should. I've just seen the Cruiserweight match. Uh, <laughs> more on that at the preview. Okay, from your hosts, the Master of the Brain Damage. I'm the Master. And the one and only Savage. Damn it, you throw me off. <laughs> we will see you on the next one. Damn it.